Satan, Lucifer, Belial, Leviathan, Samael. Cygnus Atratus, how are you doing, brother? Magus Alastronaut, I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. People are probably wondering why we're painted up and everything. Um, I guess the the answer is because we want to. <laughs> it's not That's uncommon right. for me to, um, well, for our entire coven during rituals to paint our faces, to wear masks and things like that. Sometimes that heightens the, um, the ritual. So, um, yeah, makes it, makes it a little bit, um, more Halloweenish. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So what's been going on with you, brother? Brother, it's a true blessing to be here with you. Just talking about the Father, talking about our black craft, you know, sharing in this community with those that are watching as well, this left-hand path of ours. So it's just a true infernal blessing. Everything on this end is good, getting ready for the holidays coming up and um, and spending time with our brothers and sisters from the coven. Wonderful, wonderful. So you've got a few books that you've uh, you've published here recently. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, first, I have to say that, you know, you're a big inspiration in that, having you and all the great work you've done. So thank you for your guidance. Took a lot of hard work to get these pieces together. It's definitely was an offering to the father and um, more of a, just a personal thing as well. Wasn't so much about trying to be social media famous or popular, not that I am, but it, I think it's part of everyone's, you know, magical workings too. put something together. I think that's the greatest testament as you're working through these journeys for each person to write their own grimoire or masterpiece and um so i just felt it was necessary in, in my walk with south and us to to offer something unique in terms of my path however understanding that everyone's path is unique to them so so i know one of your books is about recovery and we've we've had a lot of people that are in recovery or they're looking for recovery from addiction. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. The satanic recovery, heaven and hell states of mind. So when I started to walk this path, as many of us, there's, all sorts of different experiences, experimentations, trial and error. And I also felt love for my brothers and sisters and felt that there was also a lot of personal struggles that folks, and including myself along the way, had to work through. One of which I feel is often misunderstood is the idea of addiction or substance use and rituals. And I've often have seen that kind of go sour for a lot of folks, even though they met well or whatnot. And I felt there was a need for some type of inspirational, reflective text that incorporates the concept of sobriety, um, personal development, personal growth, but also brings in the language the inspirational language of the father in terms of Satanas, Lucifer, and the pantheon of our hosts of hell. And I do find that it's also quite blasphemous in a way because the outside world that doesn't know this might think we're all about 
sociopathic um, debauchery. However, it's quite refreshing to know that on the satanic path, you could also really aspire for sobriety and personal development. You don't have to look any one way or another. I know there's different groups that enjoy different things and that's all good. But for those that feel that sobriety is something that aligns with their goals, I wrote this book for you. And it's an inspirational text just to kind of have on your nightstand to read a little bit to with some questions that you can reflect on. And um, because I also feel in my walk, it was important sobriety. And the more I've come to know the father in my journey, the more I come to appreciate the that principle as well. Nice. I think that's something that is really needed on the left-hand path. Uh, as you have experienced, and I have too, many people are, are looking for answers and they're looking for recovery. And some have even lost their, their entire will to live. Uh, one person that recently joined our forum wrote a, a very nice introduction. We ask everyone on the forum to kind of introduce themselves. And, and um, this person, I believe Ice Witch is her, uh, her handle. And she was talking about... Um, even trying to self-terminate at one point and then finding Satanas in a non-judgmental way. And it's, it's just a testament to his power. I mean, he, he brought me through addiction, gave me a reason to live and, uh, and a lot of people are like that as well. Um, so it's, I think that's a, that's something that is really needed in the community. I am really happy that you did that. What? Um, Thank you. Thank some, you. It's one of my most beautiful pieces. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. No, 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 brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, there was um there is an issue out there and it seems to be making the rounds as far as um a new awakening of the spirit i was watching orly stewart um a few nights ago and she even alluded to that in one of her videos and if you haven't checked those out at home, you you should. Uh, I really love her content. But um, she was talking about feeling some kind of new um, spirituality, some kind of new becoming on the left-hand path. Have, have you experienced that? I know people contact you a lot. And they ask for guidance and and things like that. Have you kind of experienced that as well? I'm familiar with um, the narrative, yes, of a new wave of um, enlightenment or a new wave of energy or cosmic consciousness. Um, some sacred texts out in the East with the Vedas and so forth and Different yogis have also alluded to this concept as well, and as well as left-hand path practitioners. So I am in the school of thought that does or remains open to the possibility that there may be some resurgences or surges of different forces that are compelling certain challenging of paradigms and certain inspirations of evolution in our own consciousness as a species and individually, and those that may be more prone or sensitive to different uh, currents will feel different shifts happening. I do feel it may happen uh, probably within the fall 
of this year. There will be some shifts that will be happening as well. I think we live in a very interesting time where there's a lot of shifts happening, not just energetically, social, culturally. And, um, but if you're attuned enough, because change is always happening and uh, it would be um, small minded of me to assume that change only happens in my world. I'm sure there's also changes happening beyond my sphere of understanding, even within the planetary systems or the universe itself and so forth and galaxies and things that quantum physicians know very well of. So yes, I am definitely open to the possibility that there is a resurgence or a surge of dark energy perhaps that will compel a challenging of paradigms, a shifting of new consciousness. And for those that are demonically attuned portals and gates could open and one could be leveled up, so to speak, in their own consciousness as they walk with the Father and their own respective demonic guides. Yeah, that there seems to be uh, a different energy that's out there. And uh, I can certainly feel it. I know that uh, Coven members have felt it. We actually discussed it um, during the week of the Bride for the Beast, and um, it it seems to be an awakening, a spiritual awakening. And I know that people contact me as well, and they ask about um, more. Uh, some of them have come from uh, different organizations. In fact, I've I've written some things and posted some things on uh, on my Patreon about that. But they're they're looking for truth, and they're looking for something more than the atheistic Satanism. And I, uh, I, I think overall, most people, when they experience Satanas, uh, El El Ben Shakur, also another name, um, when they experience him, they they can't go back to that atheistic uh, system of non-belief. And as I have said in my books, people have, they have a hole right in the middle of their spirit, and they're going to fill it with something. Atheism uh, doesn't, doesn't feel that. It may for some people, but for most people, it does not. Do you find that people, when they contact you, that they are looking for something more? And I guess the second question, follow-up question on that, brother, is are they coming from organized religions or organized groups left and right hand path what are your thoughts on that so i'll start with the first question brother and these are really really good questions and i hope the, the listener also is reflecting on their own journey in terms of are you looking for something I generally hold the the thought that if you're on the left hand path, you're looking for something. The question is, what are you looking for? Do you know what you're looking for? And maybe you're still trying to figure that out. This term, the the terminology that kind of comes to mind for the for the seeker is exactly that: a seeker in pursuit. What I like to think is your own truth, your own understanding. Um, and I do want to caveat or say that I respect the contribution that Anton LaVey had and that many of our brothers and sisters on the atheistic path 
have also contributed socially and culturally to the movement of the left-hand path. And I would like to say that perhaps there was a reason for it in that time, in the 60s, 70s, and certainly Anton LaVey was a, a mover and a shaker and brought to the forefront something that was important then in response also to the hypocrisy of conventional, traditional right-wing norms of, of religiosity. So there was a purpose, and perhaps there is a divine or infernal plan that the great father has in terms of how this ties in to the great work. However, now we're at a different time and place. Now we're at a different time and place. Everything in the universe is always moving. Nothing remains stagnant and still. And as the universe and our solar system itself is moving through the universe, so are we. And that being said, what is the time asking of us now? Certainly there are certain shifts that are happening. There's more information with the Luciferian age, more information at our fingertips for all people of all ages, whether poor or rich, now you have access, more access to power, which is knowledge, than anyone has ever had in the history of modern civilization. That is incredible power at your fingertips. However, you have to now make sense of this knowledge, of this occult knowledge. And I think we take for granted a bit the access to occult knowledge now. We go through occultists. Uh, like your books, Alistair, and they, they, or mine, and, and, they, and we're moving through occult literature as if it's a TikTok screen. Just swipe, 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 swipe. I just want to note for a moment that some of these esoteric poems were books that back in the 1500s, 1600s, that if you came across it, you held on to it like it was a piece of gold because you knew that the religious authorities might burn it or uh, take it from you, and it was hard to get. But now, I want to tell the folks on the internet, do not underestimate the value of the knowledge that you have access to. Do not be so quick to disregard it, because you are seeking for something. And largely, we have to challenge also how we look at things in order to rediscover the satanic meaning. Because you may be surprised where you find Satanas moving in your life. That being said, I do believe, believe people are seeking. And you get folks, I think, these days that are hopping from one group to the next. And I respect that because I did that too. I was desperately searching until I found the Father, the keeper of all truth. And then I found my home. And I knew that, alas, I found the epitome and the core of all esoteric teaching. I with him, the witch father, Satanas. That being said, I appreciate the journey, and I hope that those that are seeking do not stop seeking. And if you were or been on the atheistic path, and it worked for you for some time, and yet you find yourself asking, what if there is more? Well, what if? There may be. So I tell folks, denial actually is a very powerful belief mechanism. The act of saying, I don't believe in this or I don't believe in that can actually filter out 80% of possible metaphysical experiences. In other words, if you just keep an open mind, you might not, you might not know what lies in store for you. I think the devil moves in surprises, and that's the best way. So be open to that. Open your mind to possibilities. Absolutely. Well said. So when you were working on your new books, did you feel not inspired, but did you feel that you had to write these books to get it out? I, I feel like that sometimes. I, I just wondered if you experienced it as well. Yes, brother. Yes. I think as with most artists, because that's what this is, you know, a spiritual genius, a spiritual revelation, so to speak, or personal experience. It's like art. 
And, um, and sometimes artists, we just, we have to get our work out there even just for ourselves. So it, it wasn't really about even thinking of, well, whether or not people are going to read this, it will simply focus on the task that I just have to get this done for myself. And for what I feel is something important in my satanic path and with the father and going through your coursework through the satanic priesthood and through the satanic magus degrees where was a very intricate part of that system because the way it's designed is to really get you going into those infernal internal chambers to ask yourself certain and very poignant questions and um and so a lot of the literature and the books that were written came about also during my time working closely with you in in testing these these ideas and and, and putting into fruition you know one's own version of that truth and I want to just make that very clear. I, I, I do believe as something you always mention, Alistair, and I'd like to say it over and over again, because um, sometimes we're quick to forget it. This is an individual walk with the Father. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not one size fits all. And that is one of the main differences between um, some of the other paths. Some of the other paths require uh, a certain amount of time to do certain things, or they may require degrees within uh, 30 days of each other or what have you. And that's uh, nothing wrong with that. But I do think that for the majority of people out there, what they look for is they look for the connection and whatever time frame or whatever they need to do for that connection, that is what's important. So brother, I would like to read uh, a couple of things here. First of all, this is the preface from one of your books. And I just, I want to kind of read through a little bit for the, the listener, if that's okay with you. Of course, brother. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful and humbled. I think it's, uh, it, it's really good. So, We'll start with this, and I'll get some of your feedback, including the book itself and and what you what led you or inspired you to write these sections. But the seeker comes looking for answers, disgruntled with what the world has offered, looking around. You've seen the system, your family, the traumas, the pains, the sufferings. You have sought to answer the questions deep that long within you. And something about this path has called to you with curiosity. You began to ask questions. Perhaps you had the calling a long time ago and you just waited and waited until you could not wait anymore. Or perhaps you heard from another person and something just kept telling you, turn the page, keep on scrolling, keep on clicking, keep on reading. Maybe you were surprised that when you came across the message of Satan, it resonated for you deep within your soul. Indeed, there is a fiery destruction or transformation that comes with your life when you turn to this path. 
contrary to the misconception that Satan is a malevolent force, for those that know and develop that personal relationship with Satanas, this is a gift of new life. For he is the bringer of life. How beautiful is this message. In fact, for those that have embarked on this path and walk on this path, it is a celebration of life, a celebration of the true light of Satan and of the luminous inspiration of Lucifer. Do not fret. If you have more questions than answers, you'll find that on this path. Indeed, there are more questions than answers. But what is most important is that you continue no matter what. That you continue and never stop. That you continue and never quit. This is a path for a select few, a chosen, consecrated, that despite all difficulties, challenges, and adversaries, they remain set and embark and affirm to themselves that I will, I can, I shall, and through Satan, I will overcome anything. Who better to help you overcome the barriers and obstacles in your life than the adversary himself, Satan. The adversary is Satan, the liberator, Satan, the transformer, Satan. He will ignite the blackened flame from deep within the essence of yourself so that you may truly be reborn. Hail Satan, hail yourself. I just find this is a wonderful forward. Can you give us some thoughts on its formation and inspiration? As you read it, brother, you brought me back to that place in, in time that it was coming through. And, um, well, if you're going to ask me for my truth, then I'm going to say that it came from that dark place somewhere within myself that perhaps permeates through onto the other side and maybe from the masters themselves. Now, I'm not saying I'm any special than anyone else or anything like that. I, if you just ask me for my truth, though, that's what I'm going to say. It was something that poured forth from my darkened chamber late into the hours of the night that just continued to come through and I had to write it down. And that's why I say I'm just a scribe, because I don't take credit for this. I'm not saying I, and I'm not saying it's the most advanced piece of work or anything like that, but it was something that was pouring forth, and I had to put it on paper, and I was told not to get up until it was done, and to put it out there. It also resonates partly with my story as well, this idea of a desperate seeker, Surely I know how, and this is why in the state, in the book, Satanic Recovery, it says, heaven and hell states of mind. One satanic concept is that heaven and hell are also states of mind. In other words, is your life unbearable? Can you actually come to celebrate it? For those that are living an unbearable life, well, I would like to move you and help you and empower you through these works to celebrate your life. So I believe that is what Satan is asking of us to do, to break the barriers of all those things that oppress us and that hold us back, that enslave us. He is the creator and the freedom revolutionary of that spiritual tyranny of which we call devil worship. So as I also reflected on the aspects of my past before I stepped into a true, a true walk with the Father, where I was also desperately seeking, yes, my heart goes out to the seekers. I know what it's like to feel like you're in hell. 
I know what it's like to feel you're going to the spiritual wasteland and you're hungry and you're thirsty like a ghoul barely alive. And just by the grace of the Father, for whatever rhyme or reason, I survived, but I could have easily just been left dead for vultures to prey upon. So that being said, my task as a dark bearer of that dark light is to also put something forth for the others who may come after me. I am not self-centered to think it ends with me. The Father will continue his satanic message for generations to come. And so we are on the cusp of a new technological age. So I only hope for those younger generations that maybe out of the hundred that will seek or come into the devil's temple, that there may be two or three that actually make it to the top of the pyramid. So that is why I had to do what I did for myself and for others, but also as a testament to my diabolic love for the Father. Did you find that writing these books was something that you had to do, or was this more of wanted to do? All of the above. And I'm, I'm blessed to say that I, I, I live this, I breathe it, I love it, I eat it, I desire it, I want it, I will it. I had to. It's my breathing and waking existence on every level. I don't care about social media. I don't care about popularity contests. In fact, if you see me on the streets, you might not have any idea that behind my inner chamber, late in the midnight hours, I do what I do. But I do it for the Father, and no one's there to witness me. It's not my ego. I'm not trying to be better or tougher or the most powerful. I don't care about what the herd says. So yes, I had to do it. But it's not about me, and that's why I wear this mask, because what I am doesn't matter. I am nothing. I'm just a piece of dust, and I'll be gone when I'm gone. And what remains, and I hope what remains in each of us, is that black fire. And I believe that is alive, but we have to go. We have to move ourselves. I think we, we are obsessed. With, with loving ourselves, which is great. I believe that's also the satanic message. But as the Satanist, there is also time to hail the Father. Notice I said, hail yourself. I'm not denying that. I'm not saying be a Christian doormat. What I'm saying is hail yourself, but hail the Father. Recognize that you and him stand at the mirror gazing back at each other. Don't just get only absorbed on one side of the mirror. See both ends. And that's the difference, I believe, uh, Magus, and I would love to hear your thoughts, is that atheists love to wage war for whatever the reason on theists. I see that sometimes on social media. I don't understand it because we do not. We love all of our brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, if you want to be different from the Christians, and don't act like them. Do exactly what they don't do. If, people are, if, if it was the judgment and the hypocrisy that brought you to the left-hand path, then be easygoing and keep an open mind and get along with everybody. I think the one thing that destroys satanic cults that people get stuck in and the message of the Father is lost. It's about the Father's message in your life. Yes, you have an active role in it, step into your power, but also have the awareness to know at the end of the day, hail yourself and then we say, hail Satan. I don't know, but I found that to be true as well. There seems to be for the the atheist some kind of deep seated hate. They are quick to tell you what they think, what they believe, and there's nothing wrong with that. But they're very quick to attack anyone that does not subscribe to the same things that they believe, which is nothing. And I find that to be a real, I don't know if it's maybe the souring of their spirit, but I've run across the same thing. And they seem to want to attack others with such commitment that they know by authority 
there is nothing beyond this life. And I think that is bullshit. I think that is hypocritical on their part. For them to want to evaluate all options the way that they say they do, they seem to have arrived at a place that dismisses every other idea on the face of the earth. And the fact is, as much as as we know in our heart what happens, we cannot say 100% because none of us have died. Even near-death experiences are just that, near death, not death. And so no one can say we have our theories, we have our ideas, and I think it is just so egotistical for them to say that they know there is nothing else. So we're not equipped to make those determinations that there is nothing else out there. Agreed a hundred or 666% with you, brother. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is one certainty I, I, I feel. We all are going to have an element of surprise when we come face to face with our own mortality. When you're in that casket or when your ashes are scattered six feet under and you come to terms with that darkness, whatever that is, I'm pretty certain we're all going to be surprised on some level, to some extent. Now, whether it's really surprised or just a little, depending how close you are to that truth, I guess we shall see. <laughs> and that's, that's the occult. You see, the occult is exactly that. It's a preparation for the inevitable as one comes to face with that darkness. And this is bona fide fact. From darkness you come to darkness you shall return. In fact, when you're born, you're in darkness. First thing you see as a child is light like when you're coming out of your mother. Most of us were born from women. And when we pass on, as our eyelids close and the light starts dimming and everyone that's standing around you starts fading and fading away, all it does, all you end up seeing is darkness. So that being said, it waits for you then. And this is where I come in with my diabolic laugh. <laughs> I, I think people and we all crave for certainty, you know, and especially when we're seeking and we're questioning and we're testing. It's hard to say I am wrong. It's hard to say, oh, shoot, I might not know all the answers. And, and it's a natural tendency, I believe, due to the monkey mind to want to grasp for certainty. And in doing that, we grasp for it so desperately, even as we're warring internally with this inner commotion of battle and of forces within us, because we still haven't really found the answer, then in turn, we also fight others simply to ascertain a truth that we hope exists. But in reality, a lot of those that are arguing that way, deep inside, they have that kernel of doubt and uncertainty. Until one day they start knocking on our door. Because for whatever rhyme or reason, they were left at the doorstep of their social club. They were left in the rain. They were left betrayed. And then they realize, oh, this, is, this wasn't the truth. Well, for those that are coming upon the theistic satanic door, and maybe you're coming from over there and you come in here, well, hail yourself. Always do and hail Satan. So, brother, I've had a lot of people contact me coming from satanic clubs, even large established clubs, and they don't speak very favorable about these clubs. In fact, they make reference to... Um, extortion and self 
policing and um, almost an inner policing within the club. Do you find that that is your experience as well when people contact you? It's quite unfortunate. This is something that's come up on the radar lately, and it's very unfortunate. I think the worst thing that a person can do is assassinate the soul of a of a seeker in, in through maladaptive behaviors, pretending to be a spiritual teacher or leader, but in turn, you're just taking advantage of people. I think this is one of the worst things you can do to the brothers and sisters of the craft. And I believe those supposed leaders in positions of authority who are abusing their power, because the Father gives the power, at least that's how I see it. And if you don't demand of yourself, I believe what's the left-hand path ethic in order to facilitate the right setting for our brothers and sisters to nurture their souls. I mean, everyone's, no one's perfect. I, I'll be, we all make mistakes, but if you really go out of your way as a narcissist, you know, antisocial sociopath, you know, and then find name with the father and you are just stepping and abusing and traumatizing and, and destroying the spirit of seekers. I think that's a horrible thing. I think, I think there's not good things waiting for you on the other end. And uh, I would really encourage self-reflection. You know, the darkness is not something to play with for your own egotistical gains. I totally agree with that. I think there is um, a special persecution for those individuals especially those that would take advantage. And I've seen uh, videos that these organizations have forced the person to make recanting what they had said or withdrawing what they said. And I think it is totally diabolical and totally against our beliefs on our path, anyone that wants to silence the voice is an enemy in, in our thoughts. And that crosses political lines, that crosses belief lines, religion. Anyone that wants to censor you as an individual, we are very much against. Whether you agree with that voice or not, it's still something that we totally disagree with. But it's happening out there in these other organizations. And I guess the the saying goes, absolute power corrupts absolutely in some cases. Thank you for bringing awareness to this issue. So there's listeners that are going through something similar. I just want you to know there are options. And I think you said it, Alistair, the voice, the true voice of each magician must be uttered and spoken and must never be stifled. Sure, we are all plagued with the challenges of interpersonal conflict and getting along and all of that good stuff. And I suggest working it through and problem solving and, and trying to figure things out and, and being open-minded. But if it's something tyrannical, if it's something about uh, uh, extreme and the stifling of a person's voice and oppression, um, that is absolutely what we do not stand for. And despite the Halloween attire, I think, Alistair, you, to your point, we have ethic. So if there's a Christian watching this video and you're seeing the Halloween attire, I want you to know we are one of the most disciplined individuals with a consciousness that we like to think is beyond the norm. 
In other words, we also challenge ourselves. That being said, there is an ethic, although we may not necessarily abide by the conventional ideas of morality. There are social agreements. No one's breaking the law or anything like that. Live and let live. Be yourself to free to speak your voice. And I think for those that are suffering, you must find that voice and you must be courageous enough to speak it and not, not let anyone silence you. That's the surest path to your freedom. And I do believe the satanic message at the core is a message of freedom. And I find it amazing that people who embrace the left-hand path are sometimes the biggest advocate for silencing other voices. And I think it's totally hypocritical. It's totally against what Satanas has provided us in the form of the Gnosis. If you don't like what a person says, well, all I can say is come up with a better idea. Engage that person. Provide your thoughts, not in a combative fashion, but in a fashion of sharing the ideas and keep the conversation going. There's too much censoring going on in social media and different groups. Ultimately, what that does is that leads to groupthink. And no one is able to get out of some of these situations that they find dragging them to the bottom of the cauldron, so to speak. That's right. At the heart of it, it's really about thinking critically, freeing your mind from any environmental influences that may be keeping you conditioned in some type of programming, like a pawn in someone else's game, free your mind. At the same time, as you acquire more knowledge of self and of the dark arts, keep the paradox of balance between having an open mind and also knowing your truth. Having an open mind, although simple, is one of the hardest things to do for human beings. Because it's like gravity. It's always working against you. It's always wanting to constrict your mindset. The occult path is always challenging the paradigm of that mindset. You must push against the resistance in order to continue pushing upon the parallax, the horizon, to reach him, them, and the hosts of that Abaddon of a place that we all aspire to on this path. That's why it never ends. And that's why, as you mentioned in the book earlier, you must never quit. It is an uphill battle. No one said it was going to be easy. Dark enlightenment is not entitlement. So I'm going to say that again. Dark enlightenment is not entitlement. And for those that abuse their power, well, that power will also turn on you and will devour you. Because control is an illusion. And if you're masquerading, in this tradition, it'll come back to you. It always does. So is there anything that you want to share with our audience before we sign off this evening? Well, brother, I want to ask you, what do you feel after your many years of experience on this path as a wise one as well in these dark traditions? What do you feel is the greatest the vocal truths that you could share with me here and with the others that are listening. I think the greatest truth is found within the self, the true self, and the spirit, along with the guidance and the gnosis from Satanas. He is the one that makes all of this make sense and without him none of this makes sense 
It's a collection of fools being led by a tyrannical liar. That is what established religion is. And it's nothing more than a control mechanism and a way to control a person's thoughts, their actions, their reactions, and using things like guilt against the person is a very powerful weapon. And I think these established religions, Zionism especially, have certainly done nothing more than try to control the masses, people, and tried to get in on the ground floor of the narrative to have others do their bidding. And I think oh. we see that today with so many situations, so many unjust situations, even uh, genocidal things that are going on in the world that are supposed to be from the moral high ground. It's nothing more than a control mechanism and a way to crush other people and treat other people as lower than themselves, as animals. And in justifying that as being an animal, it makes it easier for the human psyche to treat these people with such hate. And I think this is something that is going to change the major landscape, the socio-landscape, but also the psychological landscape because in some cases, these factions will never, ever be able to say they're doing this in God's name or they're taking the moral high road. They have proven that they're not doing that. They have absolutely proven that they are nothing more than taking advantage of murdering thieves. Well, Satan. Well, thank you for hanging out this evening. I have really enjoyed it. I hope our viewers enjoy it. I hope they get something out of it. Be sure and let us know. Drop something in the comments and let us know what your thoughts are. And brother... Thank you very much for the books. I'm going to put a link in the description. I think they are a wonderful place for a searcher to look, to find some answers. And I, I think they're well written with a great message. So thank you, brother, for sharing some time with me thank you evening. brother for your time thank Absolutely. you for your time for sharing this space thank you for those tuning in and satanic blessings and for the seekers may satan continue to bless you keep on keep it on feel free to reach out so until next time this has been alistair knocked with mega cygnus atratus Ave Satanas. Ave Satanas.